Hello, I'm Peter Waterworth and welcome to the second in our series on ink and wash. Today we're going to be sketching trees and then adding a colour wash. So in this session we particularly want to focus on trees as a part of a major picture, not the major feature, but perhaps something that leads the eye into the main feature of the picture. Uh, maybe they provide a bit of context or background or uh, the general ambiance of the picture. Secondly, we're going to be looking at the way in which we produce line and shading and look at the variations that we can produce in both of those and the combinations of those different things. And then thirdly, we're going to be looking at the way in which we add colour, how we add a colour wash. Remember, this is an ink and wash technique that we're trying to demonstrate. Uh, you may have a slightly different technique. Uh, we're not specifically looking at watercolour. Uh, we'll do that a little bit later on. We're looking at the way in which we combine ink and the wash. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, hopefully you will join in, do these exercises, see how you go. Stop the video at various places and you can catch up with the uh, drawing or the painting. Here's an ink and wash sketch. It's not mine. See how the trees lead into the main feature, the church, and one tree, not even any uh, colour in the foliage. Okay, we're going to try starting with this particular tree. It's a conifer. The sun is coming from behind us. It's a very yellowy colour. There's not much shade in this at all. So we we'll start by doing an outline. I'm doing this without a pencil first. Just a dotted kind of uh, indistinct outline. And then we'll alter this, correct any of the errors that we've got as we go through. Most of the sun is coming from the right hand side of the picture. There's a small uh, amount of shade, but it's on the left hand side. Notice that the um, angles across of the foliage is um, on a diagonal. We're filling in some of the patches with dark colours where there are dark patches. And we're shading as we go. Now let's try some watercolour. I take this when I'm going out painting. A little palette. I fill up the wells with the uh, paint and top them up every now and again. And I put them in a plastic bag so you know it's uh, quite easy to um, carry them around if they're dry and just put a bit of water on it. And uh, the main thing is to mix the colours, of course. So we add water to the pan, to the palette, and we add colours in and mix the colours as we go. I'm trying to do a tree here for this first colour. So we'll mix the colours, add a little bit of um, darker green, a little bit of brown, and uh, maybe that's a little bit too dark. Let's try a bit of yellow again. Sometimes I dip straight into the palette. Should clean the brush first. So this is a piece of watercolour paper that we're just practicing this on. A little bit of the darker colour straight on top of it and even straight from the palette. Now watch the colour as the colours fade into each other. Washing out the pan and then we're going to try a little bit of sky. I know there's not going to be any sky in this picture but let's just have a look at the way in which we put this on the, uh, in the palette. This is a too vivid of a colour so I need to add a little bit of red mauve colour just to uh, temper that a little bit much. Wipe out the brush of tissue and just tap it into the red and mix it into one part of the palette. It's good to use the palette for a number of different purposes. Get a few colours, mix them as you go, as you need to. Slightly darker colour at the top and you can even see now that these colours are fading in to make a more even colour. Watercolour gets lighter as you as it dries, unlike house paint, which gets darker, wall paint. So when you're adding a colour, you'll know that it's going to get a little bit lighter as it dries. You can always add a bit more. So we're using this yellow colour over the whole thing, and then a little bit of a darker, a bit of a grey mixed in with the yellow, with, with the uh, greeny yellow. 
and I'm adding a few little bits here and there, leaving some patches white. These patches, these uh, bits that are blended in, will blend in even further. Here's the next tree. It's a little street tree, a juvenile. And I'm going to draw this out first with the pencil, which I didn't do with the other one. The light is coming from the right hand side and from the back, I suppose the back right side. So we're sketching this out just to get the position of the uh, object on the paper to make sure that the uh, placement is okay on the paper and that the picture composition is going to be okay for the size of the picture that we're doing. And when we use the pen, the pencil lines are just a guide so I don't have to stick to the pencil lines. Try to keep the pen on the paper as long as possible so that I get a fairly continuous line. The branches taper towards the top until eventually we can just use a pen stroke to indicate the branches. Now some of the foliage, this is a broken line again. There's a lot of light coming especially on the top of this tree and so we don't want a continuous line, we want it broken. When the paint goes on you'll see that the uh, the lighter colour will be at the top. Now a bit of um, shading and texture. This is texture, now this is shading. So the shading is for, far more regular. It can be light, it can be dark. So a little bit of a mixture actually here of the scribble method and the shading method. And the branches I'm do, using just single strokes rather than shading strokes. The light comes from the right hand side towards the bottom. There's not much shadow and lightness on one side. We have grass and shadow of the, of, the, um, of the trunk. We rub out, rub out the pencil lines. If you have good quality paper, the rubbing out will not affect the paper. And we'll mix up, first of all, the light. We start with the lighter colours and then we move to the darker colours. We can always come back and go over things again. I'm not going right to the edge of the shape itself. A lot of this will be covered over with darker colours. But I want the lightness, I want the um, vitality, the brightness of this picture to come through. So with watercolour, we do not just fill it in like we would for a colour pencil drawing. We can add the green and we can add a more of a greyish colour or a browny colour as well. So even leaving some blank spaces, some white spaces, where we add the green over the top of the yellow, it will blend in. Even darker still. And then the branches and the trunk. Remembering to leave that right hand side clear. The whiteness will show the direction of the light. And even a bit of green at the bottom. Now here's another one without sunshine, gum tree. With the gum tree it's not about the foliage, it's about the trunk. All of the interest is in the trunk, the colour of the bark, the bark falling off the tree. So the trunks always taper as they get further and further away from the main trunk, the branches taper. Here again we're just doing pitch composition here, trying to get the position. I'm only choosing to do two trees. The first one is the main one at the front. The second one is just there to give some context and it's not nearly as important and therefore we will not colour it in and we'll draw it in such detail. Again, trying to keep the pen fairly constant on the paper. Now we'll do this tree at the side. 
like the curvy nature of this tree. When you see something uh, with a bit of an unusual look about it, it's great to try to reproduce that in your picture. The uniqueness, the uh, individuality of the object is really what is attractive about it. I'm fairly careful trying to keep the lines of the branches as parallel as possible. They are branches, they're from nature and therefore we don't have them exactly parallel and of course they taper as they get further away from the trunk. A bit of a stump here, a broken branch, a bit of shadow, a bit of stain on the tree. And we can do some of the lines around and some of the foliage. Gum tree foliage is, um, well the leaves are long and thin. We don't draw the leaves individually. And we put some of the shading on. So we're showing, we want the greyness of this to come through, the creaminess or the whiteness, the greyness of the trunk, we want it to shine through as well. The strokes on one side of the tree are one angle and then the other side of the tree, they are a different angle, showing the roundness of the tree. Not much shadow in this picture. This is fairly generic, this one. So we're not trying to do a lot of detail, we want it to be fairly plain. Shadow will be under the branches, especially that bigger one. And the darkness will be at the bottom. And some of the uh, bark hanging down, it always looks great to see the, the bark as it falls, it hooks over some of the lower branches, it looks wonderful. Even on this side here. Now a bit of grey grey paint, we start with the lighter colours of course, and we move towards the darker ones. We want this mistiness, the calmness, the coolness of this picture to shine through. So we don't want the bright colours, we don't want the yellows and the red colours. We go to more towards the greyish colours, the bluey greys, the misty colours, the calm colours. So when we're doing the foliage we don't want the bright yellow. A bit of the brown coming through. Mostly at the bottom, but some at the top. The brown bark. This is where the character is in the picture. Now a little bit of foliage. Maybe this is a bit too yellow. Is to break that down with a darker colour. If we don't like the colour, we can smear it down with a finger or with a tissue. That green is a better colour. We want a greyish look. We want to show, that's a bit dark, we want to show the leaves, some of the leaves, not just in the pen but also in the brush strokes if we possibly can. And now a bit of redness in the tree, in the trunk itself. Okay, how did you go? It's really great fun, isn't it, to try to demonstrate and develop skills. And hopefully you've achieved something worthwhile today. I hope you have. Everybody has their own style. And I hope you're trying to define what your style is and the way in which you produce it, the way in which you draw the line, the way in which you compose the picture, the way in which you apply paint. Everyone is different and they produce a different kind of effect, overall effect. So let's hope we can go on from this and work on these kinds of techniques and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for joining us today. Bye bye.